As for most people start their crypto journey, the first app they download isn't actually a crypto wallet. It's a centralized exchange, or CX. You sign up, deposit some money, buy some coins. The main appeal? It's just way easier to deposit and withdraw money. For most of us, this is how we first step into this world. But here's what you might not realize. The moment you deposit that money, you're taking on risks you probably don't even know about. And you definitely don't know that beyond whatever CX you're using right now, there are actually tons of other options out there. We're talking centralized exchanges, DEXs built around AMMs, hybrid exchanges, and these fully on-chain exchanges that have really taken off in the last couple years. Look, I want to help everyone who's either just starting out or has been in the space but still feels lost. I want you to really get what these different types of exchanges are all about, help you see where the real risks are hiding, and skip those sketchy exchange traps, and ultimately to pick the platform that actually makes sense for what you need. Now, out of all the risks out there, there are two that really make people angry and make them feel powerless. First one, the platform just disappears. Exit scam, goes bankrupt, rug pull, call it whatever you want. You wake up and boom, platform's gone, your funds are gone. Second one, you get sniped. It's 3 a.m., some random wick tags your stop to the dollar and then price instantly bounces. Or as the market's moving, you try to close position and suddenly they tell you, system under maintenance. Why does this even happen? Why do platforms that look safe suddenly pull the plug, push weird wicks on the chart or just straight up vanish? A lot of people will tell you, just use a decentralized exchange. But here's the problem. Decentralized has turned into a buzzword. Half the time, you can't tell what's actually on chain and what's just good marketing. So today, I want to give you a simple three-part way to look at any exchange so you can tell if it's actually a transparent vault or just a live wire waiting to shock you. You really just have to answer three questions. First, where's the money? That's custody. Second, where does the trading actually happen? That's execution. Third, who's allowed to change things? That's governance. Let's start with where the money is. That's where all kind of risk begins. MT Gox, FTX, they all showed us the same thing. Once you hand your funds to someone, you also hand them the power to mess things up. And here's the key part. Just because you connect a wallet does not mean you actually control the funds. Real self-custody means nobody can move your assets except you. That's the base layer of safety. And if someone else can touch it, then you have to ask, is there regulation? Is there legal protection? Is there an actual framework behind it? Second question, where does the trade actually get matched? This is the part that explains why you get wicked and why they go down for maintenance. On most CXs and most so-called hybrid DEXs, the matching engine runs on their servers. That is a black box. What you see on the screen is just what they choose to show you. If they want to send price to zero for one second or freeze the system right when you need it, you cannot stop it. But on real on-chain exchanges, everything, the matching, the orders, the settlement, lives on the chain. Transparency is no longer, the app shows me a number. You can go to a block explorer and see the actual transaction. That changes everything. It turns, please explain, into, I can verify. If you get liquidated, you are not stuck taking screenshots. You can check the block, see the oracle, and list the orders. That is the difference between fair liquidation and getting robbed. Third question, who makes the rules? This part gets ignored a lot, but it is critical. Who can change trading fees? Who can change funding? Who decides which oracle to trust? If all of that sits in the hands of one team, then no matter how much they say on-chain, it is still centralized at the control layer. So you see what I'm saying. Decentralization is not a slogan. It is a way things are set up. A real exchange should let you answer three things clearly. Who controls my assets? Can I verify what happened? And can the rules be changed in a fair way? If you cannot answer those, you are not trading. You are just hoping. All right, so today we set up the framework. In the next episode, we're going to zoom in on that first piece, custody. Does the self-custody you think you have actually protect you? We'll walk through how different exchanges hold assets and what kind of risks we should be aware of. Follow the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.